awesome song selection, amen? I'm glad to say that the blood still works. Work for me? He can work for you. Um, turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to start with verse 31. I know that sometimes in this good fight, it seems like we need a little bit more support than what we are already given. But all we need is right here in this book. Amen. I'll leave it right there, I guess. Um, give me an amen when you're with me at Matthew 13 and verse 31. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and lodge on the branches thereof. Is this a little bit better? I don't know if any of you have actually ever seen a mustard seed. It's really small. It's a really small seed. You have some? Amen. Praise the Lord. You want to hold those up for everyone? Can anyone see anything besides a bag? Because I can't. That's how small. I know the camera can't see, but trust me, it's very small. And have any of you actually seen a full-grown mustard tree? Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful tall tree full of thick branches that could probably fit many, many, many birds. But we know that the kingdom of heaven is actually more than even just this physical tree. Tonight I sort of want to talk about uneasiness and fighting the good fight. Sometimes it's easy to feel as though doors have been closed or that all doors are closed and that our fight isn't going in vain. But I want to remind you that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we still have the comforter, amen? Yeah. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13 and 11. Give me an amen when you're there with me. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For, we have, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. There are many times, I'll give you myself for an example, I work about 38, 40, 48 hours a week in a factory making car parts all day. Now, believe you me, I pray day and night for everybody's salvation, but we know that not everybody is saved out there. And we know that Jesus taught he's not for me, he's against me. Sometimes it seems like some people are more against Jesus than others. Um, a factory is not the best place to work. When we go out into the world, a lot of the times we feel as though, no, we are cast out. We are the ones that are made to look like we're dead. But at least I can speak for myself when I say I wasn't alive before I came to Christ, amen? We are the ones who have life because we have him. Let me remind you. 
hard to feel this way. Sometimes we feel discouraged. Sometimes we feel scrutinized falsely. Because who are the evildoers? Hopefully not us. Sometimes we fall short, amen. But So we are bearing a reproach that is wrongfully ours. I know someone who lives inside of me and inside of, prayfully, most of you who also bore reproach that wasn't his. And I want to encourage you and tell you that you're blessed even the same. When you're told you're different, when you're looked at differently, when you're told that you're, that you're, living, that you're living a lie, first of all, we know him. You can't tell me I'm living a lie because it's too late. I already know him. I, it's too late for me to turn back. It's too late for me to not believe because I already know him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're blessed for being, for bearing, rather, this reproach that isn't yours. You're blessed. That takes me back. I don't know if it takes any of you back. Back to Hebrews 11. Let us go forth, forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. You guys want to know why you feel separate? Because we are separate from the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Wait a minute. I did, that didn't sound like, okay. Let me, let, me, let me put that back again. Have you ever sat down and had the enemy make you feel so separate from the world that you're starting to question your own sanity? You're starting to question everything that you live for, the way you live, and why you live. Let me tell you, we are separate from the world. And I've got good news. This world isn't going to last much longer. Continuing means to go on. It's not going to go on. This is going to come to an end. Hallelujah. And there's one to come that's going to be continuing. This one isn't going to be. Let's imagine for a second. Okay. What everything that we've been, that we were born into and know as a world is going to come to an end. How many different ways can I say this? There's going to be more after this. Okay. We're so, we're so focused on the, the, the scrutiny the reproach that isn't ours, that we forget that we're bearing it because this isn't our world. This is where we are today, but this isn't what's going to be. Hallelujah. I pray to God every day that I make it to that world to come. Amen. Amen. This is our mustard tree. When you get weary, when you forget why you're fighting the good fight, as Paul called it, remember the mustard tree. There's another tree I want to talk about. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 52, if you will. Give me an amen when you're there. We're going to start with verse 7. <clears throat> Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. Again. We face constant discouragement because if the devil can beat our spirits, if the devil can beat my spirit and make me feel like I'm already beaten, then, well, I'm beaten if I feel beaten. If I put myself in the place where I surrender to what the circumstances that the devil's put in my life, I'm beaten. But let's remember that God is good. Amen. And has already redeemed us. 
but our flesh is not redeemed. To try to do this on your own isn't going to work. Let's remember that God put other people in this world for a reason. He didn't just make you and leave it be you. He didn't just make Adam and stop at Adam. Our actions have effects on others. So let's remember to encourage others. Because something that you may be going through that you think no one else understands, amen, they more than likely do understand. Maybe not in the same exact circumstance. But the principalities behind what you're feeling have been brought against them. So let's be a green olive tree. And how do we be a green olive tree? Is by trusting not in riches and strengthening not in wickedness. That means that if I go out, okay, wickedness, let's talk about wickedness. There could be, anything can be wickedness that is not intended for good. I have it written down as eagerly coveting mischief, perverseness. That means if I were to, I'm trying to think of an example. Anytime I plan against somebody else to try to put myself over them, anytime I think myself higher than anybody else, that's mischief. Amen? He's already done it. The third way we can become an olive tree is by trusting in his mercy. Now, there's a lot of the times, and I, and I pray that you all are doing the same, when I question my own salvation. We all need to take a step back and, and analyze the way that we're living. But don't let the devil push you so far as to where you believe that the way that you are following the Bible. Now, this doesn't mean that live however you want and try to find a verse that justifies what you're doing. Use the entire word of God. Don't let the devil convince you that the word of God isn't enough, that this Bible is incomplete, that his sacrifice means nothing. We need to trust in his mercy to understand that, amen, it is finished, that he has conquered sin once and for all. By doing this, we can give others rest in our fellowship. When we're feeling unstable, the first thing we're going to do is look for stability. Amen. Let's find people who are stable in the word of God. Let's thank the Lord for our pastors, our elders, our bishops, our deacons. Amen. All brothers and sisters in the Lord who love his law and love, love his word. Now, I'm just not going to sit up here and talk about trees all night. I have a point that I'm going to. Let's go to that. Let's turn to um, Genesis chapter 8. I can't believe this guy's actually making us read. Amen? Okay. Chapter 8, and we can start at verse number 8. Now, this is when Noah was sort of in the calm of the flood, waiting to see what was going to happen. If you can imagine the world being flooded with water, and you're one of the few men left, and a not really that big boat compared to the size of the flood. It's kind of an awkward thing. Verse 8 says, Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her 
and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth a dove out of the ark. Let's stop here for a second. Supportingly enough, we see throughout the Bible two Hebrew words used for the word dove. The first one is peristera. The only time that we see this word used is in the Gospels when the Holy Spirit came down like a dove upon Jesus. The other word we see, and in this case being used, is Yona. Every other time throughout the Bible besides when the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus like a dove is the word we see. Every other time you see reference to a dove, most every other time, minus one, you see the dove portrayed as innocent, as young, silly, trembling, weak, innocence, still new, and young. Hey Amen. I'm 20 years old. Um, I did wrestling for, I think, 10 years. At least to lift a lot of weights. So sometimes I look in the mirror and I think, hey, I'm pretty tough. But there have been some situations where I've been put down on my knees, amen? No one else has been put down on their knees before by any situation? Thank you. Some, you know, it's hard to be honest about that, I guess. <coughs> I'm going to use this analogy for a dove as us. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her, and pulled her into, un, in unto him into the ark. Sometimes when I'm working in this factory job, sometimes when I'm driving home, sometimes when I'm in situations at home, out wherever I am, I feel so separated from fellowship so separated from the word of God that I don't know what to do. Does anybody else feel this way? Now, the first thing I've learned to do is to call out. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go stomping around the mall out in Mishawaka, praising them, going full throttle church service. But why not reach out to God in these times when we feel separate from him? The Bible says, draw near unto God, and he'll draw near, nigh unto you. Draw near unto you. So why not go running back to the person that made us and made this world and have him pull us back into safety when we find no other comfort? Amen? Amen. Now, And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Now I see two things in this scripture. A little bit of prerequisite on doves. Doves are very strict vegetarians, rarely eating meat. The second thing I see was where there's nothing, now there is something. And that's rest for the dove. We can find rest in other olive trees and other people who are trusting in the word and the mercy of God. And we can be fed by them. Our testimonies become a living word of God once we submit to him. If you don't know where to turn, turn to the Bible, amen. But if you don't know where to turn in the Bible, amen, go to somebody that does. 
Go to somebody that, all, that trusts in him and that's somebody that's on the same straight and narrow, S-T-R-A-I-T and narrow path. It's not straight as in you've got to walk straight down the aisle. Straight as in it's very rugged. Straight is the gate. It's hard to get into heaven. It's hard to get into heaven. So let's find other people who are trying to do the same thing and working on the same hard path and ask for words of encouragement. Don't be too ashamed to ask for encouragement. What if, it, what if this is what your salvation depends upon? But I'm, too, but I'm not humble enough to go to, go to my pastor or to go to, an, go to a deacon or an elder or, or a friend and say, man, I'm struggling with this. I need help. How did you overcome this? Do you have the same problem as me? Did you have to overcome this? What does the Bible, Pastor, what does the Bible say about this? When did that go out the window? Amen? And he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. We are going to keep fighting this fight until the day that Jesus returns. Amen. Isn't that the goal? Or is the goal or is the goal to make it through life a little bit easier? Because sometimes sometimes that's what it seems like. Sometimes we are so focused on now because of our reproach, because of our recreation, because of our persecution, however great or small it may be. We are so focused on now that we are forgetting that this world is not continuing. There's no continuing city here. That there's a world after this. And that's, our, that's, that's what we have, the hope of glory, amen? When you go out, when we go out, guess what? One day, we're not going to come back. Why is that? Because we found the mustard tree, amen? Can't you see the mustard tree? I can see the mustard tree. When I don't, I'm going to find an olive tree to remind me of the way to go and what the word says. Amen? Let's not forget that this isn't the end. This is just the beginning of his plans for us. There's a city waiting for us where there's no sun because he's our light. Amen? Where anyone who thirsts can go to the river, the springs of the river of living water and drink. Or will live under the tent of the Lord and serve him day and night, never hungering, no thirst. Is anybody excited about this? We need to be excited about this. We need to be repenting. We need to not be so, so headstrong and, not, and, and have no humility where we can't go to somebody and ask for help. We need to remember that God gave what we, us what we need here and here. When he lives in someone else, you believe that he lives in someone else, but you won't go to that someone else to ask them for help. It's not about right now. It's not just about right now. We can be missing out on what he has for after now. Amen? I'm not going to bug everybody too much. I just want everyone to be encouraged. Know that as hard as this struggle may be, this is not the end. It's only the beginning. That's all I have. I'm going to turn it over to the pastor.